the opportunity to, uh, to meet some of you uh, in person. Uh, so this is a joint work with the Troy, Hongbin, and Xin from different places. So it's certainly a teamwork. Uh, and feel free to ask uh, any question. I will share your thoughts with my co-authors. Uh, let me start with our motivation. Uh, as you all know, perhaps that now there's a growing literature in economics uh, emphasize the rule or the ability of entrepreneurs and managers both at macro level in terms of form productivity and at the macro level in terms of economic growth, right? I don't need to go through this literature, it's very influential. However, if we are, take a step back and ask, well, yes, you know, ability or talent of uh, entrepreneurs is so important, then are talented individuals in a society more or less likely to uh, become entrepreneurs? Then the answer is not so clear. So on the one hand, you may say yes. You know, if you think of all these uh, canonical economic models, we are we know like even Lucas model, for instance, usually you will get a positive answer, right? You would assume, uh, you know, an individual ability would transform to form productivity, etc. So, so, so we should expect a positive uh, a correlation. But on the other hand, if you are a political economist, you may say, oh no, perhaps no, not. Uh, you know, as you know, there is also old uh, theoretical literature on talent allocation to argue that oh, talent is useful for entrepreneurship, but it's also useful for other sectors, right? So under certain uh, you know, return uh, conditions, you know, talented individuals might be attracted away from the entrepreneurial sector, which would have implication for a country's uh, development. Uh, surprisingly or not, empirical investigations on this relationship you know, between individual level ability and entrepreneurship are, are not extensive. Uh, I'm sure there could be some study in your mind, but if you think a bit more carefully what they measure, the relationship is not so clear. This is not because you know, the question is not important, it's mainly because of the typical empirical challenges. So the challenges are clear, right? First is measurement. How would we measure uh, entrepreneurship? Usually we would rely on some survey data, uh, but these survey data often do not differentiate self-employment from form owners. And when they do, uh, there's very little information on the form owned by these individuals in the survey. Uh, in, you know, intuitively, you should imagine, and in fact, there's also recent study documenting that this is a very important self-employment it's very different from business ownership, right? Uh, so the second, so, so first we want to know how to measure it might matter a lot. Second is all about measuring ability, right? What, you know, what do we mean? How could we measure ability? Suppose we have some measure, how could we know its individual ability, not to the rule of education or the rule of family background, right? These kind of challenges are critical for interpreting the relationship we find in some data. So in this paper, we have studied this question uh, in the context of China. Uh, I want to emphasize that China is an interesting context itself. Uh, on the one hand, uh, you know, there's very, very active entrepreneur uh, activity in the country. So we talk about economic growth, who are creating you know, this growth? If you think a little bit, you know, there must be a lot of entrepreneurs and their firms that, that generate employment and growth. Uh, so in fact, there are now you know, more than 20 million private firms. That means active private firms in the economy. If you divide this number by say, adult population, you will get a, a, a number about say, three per hundred. So it's certainly a very entrepreneurial country. Uh, on the other hand, you know, if you know this country or uh, even if you don't know, there's this strong uh, view that the jobs in the state sector are more preferred by citizens. You know, we are mentioned some survey we did among the college graduates. Right? The, the, the government jobs, the jobs in the state-owned enterprises are ranked purely the top uh, in their preferences. So in this uh, kind of scenario, it's not clear exactly whether talented Chinese are more or less likely to become entrepreneurs. So we want to investigate this uh, with the data. Uh, so 
Well, empirically, what we do is we'll link two major administrative data sets in China. On the one hand, is the uh, education side, which is the college admission records during between 1999 to 2003. So these are five year, five cohort of individuals. Uh, I, I guess oh, I saw some question. Let me just uh, complete this sentence and, and get the question. And so Sean uh, and I might both in the data. So we are in our mid thirties now. Yeah, I think it's a good time to look at our career outcomes. And we will link this admin data with the, all the records on the form registration in China. This includes all the forms that ever registered uh, in this country from 1980s to we well, are stopped by 2015. Uh, so this is the data limitation. So the idea is we we'll look at these individuals. We know their you know college records, etc. We will look at by mid 30s who of these people create forms and how successful uh, their forms are. So Norman, I saw you. Know, if you yeah, please. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Just a, a quick clarification. Uh, so. In this paper, you are going to uh, differentiate between startup businesses and entrepreneurs. I mean, if if somebody starts a business, I mean, and the idea and technology is already in the market, so that one is different from the startup business in which someone starts exactly a new something which is new in the business. I see. Yeah. So we are. So what we are. This is related indeed to the definition. So we are look at. Basically, the form registration who own, who registered as owner of a new form. That's our definition of the forms. And then we can look at form success in different ways, right? If you want to be interested in even whether they are doing new business, etc., we can do that. Even though uh, so far we haven't done that, but but it's possible to go even deeper. But the the definition of, in this paper would be this form you register the form uh, as owner. You in the it will be you know, you, you 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 will have your inf personal information in the administration. That's how we define you as an entrepreneur. So it's certainly not you know self employment. You have you even if you have always stock in the firm, that doesn't count. You have to be as the owner in the firm, one of the owners. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, and so so that's what so there's this data has some strengths to help us address some of the challenges, even though not all, but I think they, this, you know, they are also very, they're already very useful. First is about the form definition Norman asked. So we'll look at form you know, creation, we can even zoom to forms of different sizes. Uh, I, you know, if you think, oh, small form may be different, we can just only look at the large form. Uh, and also, there are several form success measures. If later we want to speak to what the form, you know, measures in terms of entrepreneurial ability. The second is that we will measure this ability with a very specific measure. This is the college entrance exam score. Uh, for anyone who knows a little bit about this country, this is, uh, you know, arguably the most important human capital measure. Uh, in this society, yet we know very little whether it measures any ability. So we want to know. So, so for simplicity, we call it a cognitive ability. Uh, you can call it in different ways, but but the idea is we want to look at this, how this is, uh, whether this can predict entrepreneurship and and the success, and what if, you know, what what can we learn from data about the its implication on ability. Uh, then naturally, this is not just you know just marriage ability, right? It marries your family investment to your in yourself, uh, and it also marries uh, your college background, right? Because if you have a high, this is the the only criteria for determining college access. So if you have a high score, typically you'll go to a better college. So so we do two things. First is. In this paper, we are focused on within college comparison. The idea is Shaw and I both graduate from people's university. We, you know, presumably we have the same signaling in terms of college, etc. But we have different exam scores that you, you know, as works as a proxy for our ability differences, and we'll compare our career or pass it later. Uh, so just this this doesn't mean that study college is not interesting it's also interesting but for this study we want to focus on individual comparison the second how about our family background 
uh, will have a rich set of personal characteristics like a typical gender, a rural urban background, or you know, high school quality, birth county, or even some political uh, capital measure. So the idea is we'll compare this score measure with these personal characteristics. As you will see, there will be a very stark and interesting opposite pattern between this score measure and these personal characteristics. I, I, I will explain this more clearly. But this allows us to compare this score as a proxy for ability with the other typical uh, personal background proxies. So what we do, what we find in this paper, uh, so there are three parts. The first is just to document some facts. We didn't know what we uh, would find before looking at the data. So this paper uh, has taken us several years and a lot of time is spent on like understanding what would we find, what are the facts. So this is the, the title, I, we call it entrepreneurial reluctance. What this means, what we find is given the same college background, high school individuals actually are less likely to create firms. And this is true even if we define firms to be only the large one. This is not driven by you know, only small firms. Uh, and this relationship, this negative relationship between high score and form creation is opposite to the typical relationship between social economic status and form creation. So no, not surprisingly, people from richer families or better high schools, et cetera, they would tend to create more forms. They also tend to have a high score. Yet this relationship between score and form creation is opposite to the typical positive correlation between family background and form creation. And in terms of heterogeneity, this negative relationship is even stronger for those from better high schools, richer counties, or with more political capital. The idea is this negative relationship is stronger for the arguably more advantaged uh, economic groups. So, uh, you know, after telling you these facts, I'm sure there are maybe 20 theories already in your mind in explaining this pattern. Uh, so, all, you know, even though you may have 20 theories, in the end, these theories would be grouped into three categories, all revolving around the relationship between the score and entrepreneurial ability. You know, this relationship could be positive and a negative or now. So positive theory, we, we call it opportunity cost theory. The idea is this exam score measure is a proxy for some general ability or cognitive ability. And this ability is used for across occupations. Uh, so it has a you know, positive relationship with form success, but it's also positively correlated with wage the outcome. But then the slope differences would drive the negative relationship. We call this opportunity cost. And this is what the talent allocation theory uh, would uh, suggest. The second group, we call it negative entrepreneurial ability. The idea is, you know, you can be very skeptical about the skull measure. So you may think about, you know, the Lazier theory that, oh, becoming an entrepreneur, you have to have balanced uh, skills. The high score people may be too bookish. They could be worse entrepreneur, right? Uh, you can also think, oh, the score is not a good ability measure because it measures effort, it measures family investment, even though we as researchers cannot observe it. If we can, maybe after isolating this, we will discover you have high score, but in fact, you are a lower ability type. Uh, and this way, or this kind of different theory, we all will. We are, call it as negative entrepreneurial ability. Finally, you may have with some behavior interpretation. You could think, oh, the score's relationship between the score and form uh, and entrepreneurial ability is very weak and non exist. But high score individuals maybe are more risk averse or or they uh, are less social. You know, the overall idea is they possess some traits that are not suitable for entrepreneurship. And we want to know which of this is more consistent with the data because they will have different implications. Uh, you know, if it's only a it's, it's negative uh, relation, negative entrepreneurial ability, it's very interesting. So we can certainly blame the Chinese education system and, and we should have not joined any development lesson because these people are worse entrepreneurs. They shouldn't become the great. 
But if it's the first one, then it's a, you know it's a different implication. Maybe these people could become entrepreneur, but for some societal reason, they became someone something else. So that's why I want to understand these different uh, theories. So empirically, uh, we all look at different set of outcome. Like we'll look at a form of success, which the outcome variation across regions and the industry. Uh, the idea is, you know, this different theory should have different predictions. And we'll look at in the end, which hypothesis is the most consistent with the data. I will show you the details later, but in the end, after looking at all of this, we found that the patterns all together is most consistent with the first hypothesis. Actually, the score seems positively associated with both central plenary success and with the outcome. However, uh, they were attracted, these high score individuals uh, were attracted away by other sectors. And then we will we'll look at you know, the other sectors in this context, they look like the state sector appears to play a larger role than private sector. Both matter as attractive uh, alternatives, but uh, you know, then they could be specific to the Chinese context or countries similar to China, maybe Singapore I, I, you know, or Vietnam, where the state sector is more appealing and they played a larger role. Uh, just to let you know that working on this project is a bit like working on a detective uh, story. So the first part is we just don't know who died, so we spent a lot of time investigating who died. And then once we know that we have a lot of you know, suspects, and then we investigate each of them. And finally, we think all the evidence pointed to this is the killer, this is the opportunity cost the story. That said, this is not a typical, you know, testing one hypothesis story paper. So I'm sure you can, you know, there's still, after telling you all the uh, evidence, there could be still some suspicion in your mind. I'm very happy uh, to discuss them and to think what else we can do uh, to prove different, you know, whether our hypothesis is correct. Okay. Uh, I pause one second here to see if there any question. Okay, good. Uh, so let me now then go into the uh, data and the and the empirical patterns. Uh, so it, it took my course a few years to link these two admin data, but today I just assume it's actually linked. Uh, so excuse uh, me. Yes. Uh, following your question, uh, you, you, you also you, seen, you mentioned the three possible uh, uh, the three three points: positive, negative, norm. Have you thought about the the role of traditional thinking in this? Basically, uh, in traditional uh, traditionally uh, Chinese Chinese families, basically uh, they want to, to achieve a high school scholarly. And for the purpose of uh, get, uh, getting a job in the state sector. Yes, uh, that's true. As someone, I claim one of my periodic economic history. I, I certainly uh, thought a little bit about this, even though this paper we didn't use any historical uh, variation. But later, when I when when I show you when we set up the utility function. Uh, certainly, you could think one of the uh, parameter as a way of capturing the value. You know, even given uh, you know this kind of culture and a norm to say, I could say even give the same monetary value, I would uh, value the state sector more because it's associated with some status, right? Uh, that's for sure. The idea is this will be one factor. You know, you know, when in occupation choice model, I show you. Uh, then the idea is whether this is a particularly hold across uh, for high score individuals than lower score individuals, which I I doubt. So this paper is more about uh, the slope. We want to understand why there's such a slope. That said, there's certainly very interesting the level. You know why state sector job is more valuable. Uh, you know at the mean at the level there are different reasons, right? There's typical uh, wage safety. The, the social social safety net story. There's even something about the status, the status story, and even something that oh, there's a, our absorbed income, etc. All this could uh, 
well captured in a very, very reduced form way. Uh, there's that said, I think itself could be interesting to be studied in the future, whether the norms still matter in terms of occupation choice. Yeah. Yeah, it just follows this. Uh, I assume uh, you may deal with this in your uh, empirical part. The relationship may change over time, right? So they yeah, say the traditional thinking, traditional value changes over time. Yes, I want to clarify this data uh, on the one hand has a lot of strengths and richness. On the other hand, uh, it has this limitation. In the sense, these are people of very similar cohort, even though it's five years, but they all like people like me. We are in our mid 30s. So we are not looking at across cohort variation. Oh, I see. No, okay. It's okay. Very, very interesting, but yeah. not captured by this admin data. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, right here. Um, sorry. Um, can I interrupt? So, Rod, do you want to go first? I saw your um, hands up. Yeah, okay. I, um, in, in your discussion of the uh, different options faced by students with high scores, uh, uh, you never used the word risk. And I would have thought that the word risk is very important in this. Um, the, the, the private sector in China is smaller than the state sector. Um, and the survival duration for some new firms in China is probably not very long, right? the average survival duration. Um, and so there's substantial risk in electing um, if you are a, a high scorer, a substantial risk in selecting to go the private route. Um, so uh, you may, may, surely you can get some data on things like the um, survival life of, of entrepreneurial firms in China, for example. Um, uh, I would have thought that that's a possible um, indication of the, the level of risk and the reason why might one, since the government will always be there, but the private firms may, may not, um, why uh, families in general will prefer that their kids join the state sector. Yeah, I totally agree. So I, I would account, I, I mentioned the risk. I'll show you something about risk preferences in the survey too. Mm. Uh, uh, there, so this is a, belong to the personal traits story. Uh, again, uh, it will become clearer later. The idea is it, certainly when it's come to state sector versus uh, the private sector risk uh, is, is play the, plays a role. The, the, the idea for this to understand the pattern is whether it can explain the slope. Uh, um, and I'll come back to this uh, again. Uh, so this is, again, just to keep in mind that this is a study to explain this kind of a, interesting example not so clear negative slope whereas there are benefits to that interesting still was study in terms of explaining the levels like oh. okay yeah yeah understood okay, okay. cool uh okay so uh let me just uh, to to tell you that we after a few years we work <laughs> Really, my co-authors work uh, and their access to data. We linked these two admin data. Uh, and uh, well, today I'll use 20% random sample of the linked data. That's already include 1.8 million individuals. And by 2015, this, this 1.8 million individuals had created over 170 uh, thousand forms. So when this number just pop up on the server, I thought, oh, we must have made a mistake because this, uh, and they were, just to tell you at the individual level, it means every 100 college graduates by you know, their mid 30s, seven of them have created a form. Uh, and I, I initially I thought, oh, this is, must be too high, seven per 100 college graduates. But if you think, you know, if I told you initially, if you look at all the active private form divided by the adult population, that's you already get a number like three per hundred. So this number is not crazy because these are really relatively young and educated individuals. So they get seven per hundred. Of course, uh, most of these are small forms and I'll show you how this pattern look like when we look at restricted the definition of form size. Uh, and you can imagine even I heard the Chinese 
we talk with a lot of people who, who are creating forms and who are doing the registration. Indeed, you know, some of these forms are fake forms for sure in the form data. Uh, some are created for tax regions, etc. But the idea is that since we have all the data, we can look at this layer by layer. We, we certainly need to admit the data has some noises. And I'll let you some of you mentioned the survival. I also show you the survival analysis. Uh, again, it would have some noises in the survival data because many firms, you know, they, they maybe stopped their business, but they wouldn't get deregistered. It would be still in our firm data. So our measure would exit and the survival would also be a noisy measure. But again, because we have so many measures, so altogether we can have a relatively good understanding. Sure, please. Yes, yeah, so Richard, it seems to me now just link this uh, uh, people who just did enter this college and the firms they created. Uh, have you tried to also compare with those who did not enter the college and also created the firms? Uh, and yeah, we, we didn't focus on that. We could uh, we could do that. The reason, again, for this Pro, there's so many projects to be studied. For instance, if you want to focus on that, you can write a paper on did attend college matter or for creating a form. For this study, we want to focus on uh, within college comparison because it's very important. If I don't, uh, you know, control for college background, it's very difficult to know is the individual difference or is college make a difference. For that reason. We actually uh, always want to control for college fixed effect. So that's why we excluded those who didn't attend college uh, in this main analysis. That said, uh, this is related to the pattern. We did have a look at those, those individuals. It would be very, very similar to the picture one, picture A in this panel. So in fact, figure A, this look at those attended or accepted by college, but didn't control for any college fixed effect. And if you do that, if you include the sample, it will be rather similar for this pattern. So it's negative with slightly nonlinearity in the end. Uh, or here you would say the x-axis has positive score and a negative score, and this is related to the college admission background in China. So the, there's a, the, co the college admission has a quarter system and it's also administrated by province year and the track. So there are two tracks in high school, social science track and the natural science track. Because we want to use this score as a proxy for ability, we want to make this, you know, consider this institutional difference. So the score, the point here is already demeaned by the province track year mean. Uh, and the maximum is, of the score is 750. Uh, in this period. Uh, so the panel A is this negative relationship without considering colleges, it just pull everybody together. Panel B is isolating college fixed effect. As you see, the, the two axes are the same. So as you see that the slope becomes steeper. So what does that mean? Uh, that means if you once considering college, uh, you know, once we consider do the within college comparison, the negative slope become even stronger. And this is because if you if you don't do that, if you only look at A, the pattern makes this pat this pattern in B as well as the college benefits. On average in China, if you attended a better college, you get you created more forms, you get more wage, higher wages, etc. So that benefit was isolated by, by B, so we get a steeper slope. And the panel C and the panel D both are within a college comparison, but the definition of forms are different. Instead of looking at any forms, panel C look at forms with the registered capital larger than two million RMB. Uh, you divided by seven or, or now close to eight, maybe to, to get US dollars. And the panel D is those divided the, those forms with registered capital larger than 50 million RMB. So these are really large forms. So even if we restrict the definition to the relative large forms, we get a, a negative relationship. Uh, so that's the first main pattern. It's pretty stark. You know, before looking at the data, you can ima we imagine a different thing. We imagine some nonlinear 
pattern when you touching the positive relationship. But in the end, this is the the the, the uh, you know pattern. So we don't need to come up with create very creative nonlinear models to think about the pattern. So uh, in terms of magnitude. This magnitude would say once the deviation of the spore would decrease associated with the decline of form creation by 10%. Uh, so just to focus on the first few rules. Uh, what's interesting is this, you know, as we change the definition of the form, the mean is also become smaller when we go to larger and larger forms, right? Uh, and interestingly, if, if you look at the magnitude of decline, all relatively to the mean, it's all about 10% of the mean. And I will talk about the other personal trees as the second effects. But for now, just to remember this number, a 10% decline. Simon, please. Uh, yes. Um, Rachel, I wonder, do you have the original distribution of the scores? Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, so I wonder whether this negative relationship it's really proportional to the distribution of scores. So you have few people have high score, but you have more people have lower scores. And it, so simply just because of the numbers that could, okay. you know, can be related to the shape of that negative uh, association between the number of, uh, creating the probability of creating the new firms and the, the scores. So whether that just reflected the distribution of scores, or it's it's actually uh, it's uh, something. So the score certainly has a distribution, uh, you know, uh, the, but it would so these are probabilities. I I don't know why it would uh, affect our finding. This would say, you know, there yes, there are more people with middle range of score. Fewer, it's a normal distribution. So fewer people is, with is the, it normal distribution. Yes, the because the score is all relative. So this is because of the I actually explain a bit more. The score is this is a tournament. So the score is ranked with this province. Uh, so so this is how it's uh, designed. So it's looked like a, so it's in the paper appendix. I didn't put in the slides. It's like a normal distribution. Okay. Uh, so, but this will look at the probability. So I'm not very sure how this would affect our finding. But that said, we even see what if, what if we, you know, some robustness, we even you know, removed the tails of the score. Uh, and then if anything, the slope become a slightly stronger. I mean, the negative slope become even a bit more ne negative. Okay, uh, all right, thank you. Do I, sorry, I should have put it here. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, then we also have a look at this focus on the negative relationship for a little bit more. We look at whether this different, you know, how this look like across majors and across different tiers of colleges. You know, is this driven by a specific major or maybe driven by elite or non-elite colleges? What we find is Yes, there's some some heterogeneity across majors, but it's not so stark. So, so it seems that this negative relationship forward across majors. So we divided the major into three fields: STEM, econ, finance, law, humanity. Not surprising, econ finance people have typically have a higher mean. Uh, but on average, this negative relationship forward across different major. Uh, similarly. Uh, we divided colleges into different tier, the top 10, uh, the 11 and 100 or, or more than 100. Uh, again, this idea is, yeah, you would observe some heterogeneity, but uh, the, the more important first order pattern is this negative relationship hold across college tiers and across majors. So this, I, this seems to be a general pattern uh, in China, you know, among Chinese colleges. It's not driven by a very specific group. So then I want to emphasize the contrast between this negative relationship uh, and the uh, on score uh, and other personal characteristics. So we have a set of personal characteristics like male gender, urban rural uh, residence, uh, high school quality measured by the share of students who could go to elite Chinese elite colleges. This is a very useful measure because 
just in the China education system, high school is more decentralized the system. So you, if you can, you know, if you want to you know, send your kids to a very good high school, you need it to be of a relatively good uh, family back uh, status. And uh, there's also first first county development proxy. And we also in the college admissions, these are very young people. They were aged not 18 to 19, but they already have many of them, not many, but 5% of them already have some political membership. This naturally reflect their family political status rather than their own. Oh, these are really young kids. Uh, the idea is if you look at this, you know, non physical characteristics they generally have strong correl positive correlation with the form creation right this is a typical financial constraint story maybe you needed to be able to access capital for credit and this kind of better social uh, background helps you to do that uh, yet it's very striking to observe that the score barely you know this impact of the score barely changed after control for these personal characteristics. Second is it had stark opposite relationship between this, uh, uh, these measures. So, so it's very difficult for us to use this personal uh, background to, you know, this personal kind of social economic status to explain the negative relationship between the score and the form creation. Do you know uh, if these are the first generation uh, entrepreneurs or they are second generation? Oh, that's a good uh, question. So this is in the form, as I said, the form data is very rich, but it also has its limitation. We don't know for sure whether this is a family form, right? Could this be family form? So what we do is we'll get, we'll use some gold of the information. Uh, so I, so in the paper, I so how would we get go to that? We know all the owners of the the forms, right? So we assume this is a strong, you know, it's a too much assumption. So a lot of forms would be counted as family forms in the following way. So if we we find that if we, the for, among the form owner, if two of them share the same family form and their age difference is beyond the twenty. We we'll define this as a proxy for family form, uh, and we can re you know, remove this. Would remove about maybe twenty percent of the forms, and we we'll we we check if we remove this kind of a you know might be family form category. Uh, if anything, the relationship is very very similar for the rest of the forms. Well, it doesn't have to be family form, right? It can, it can be that you know entrepreneur, the first generation. Um, invest more in the second generation essential human oh, capital I second see. generation at a high school yeah. then also provide them capital to start their own firm so it doesn't have oh. to be family firms i see i see that we don't know so it's not that we know clearly you don't know so much about their personal uh family like parent status etc uh, i'm sure if you do that you would also get a positive relationship they are, but the idea is whether those people still it would be opposite to the a score relationship, but indeed, it's not that we have a pretty rich set of data. But we, this is not Swedish data. We don't know. We can't link their family, you know, their parents' uh, occupation, etc. So far, we wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. Yeah, Ray, please. Yeah, just one with you around regression by uh, industry sector. Yes, I will show that a bit later. How this vary by industry. It's not easy to do in this step because you only observe forms. In the industry, there's forms. So it's more makes sense to do it uh, when we look at adolescents. Yeah. Uh, it's a very important variation. I, I will talk about it later. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay, please. Ken. Ken. You, you are muted. Can you are beauty? Pardon me. Uh, what Hi. about the flip side to Simon's question? Simon asked about family firms. What about individuals that have got families of firms? That is, you have an individual that sets up lots and lots of firms. Maybe we've got firms that are that have that act as holding companies for other firms. So you've got one individual effectively owning lots yes. of 
I will, I will. When I look at firm success, I would uh, look at a little bit whether this firm invest in another firm as an owner, which I call it expansion. And, and, and just to foreshadow that, I would find that the score is actually positive associated with those type of ability. <laughs> yeah. Whereas here is a negative relationship. That's exactly the interesting contrast that I want to deliver. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, good. Uh, then I just briefly mentioned that if we do heterogeneity, it's actually more negative among women, among men, urban, those have better high school, richer county, et cetera. The idea is, if anything, this negative relationship is stronger for the relatively more advantaged group. So again, it seems difficult to use the financial constraint to explain the, the reluctance we find. Uh, now I move to understand what we can learn from the this negative pattern. Uh, you know, in particular, we want to understand the relationship between the score and entrepreneurial ability because it would speak to broad, too broad issue. Why is the score as ability proxy? Does it really measure ability? Second is, you know, if it is, it will shed light on talent allocation across sectors uh, in this society. Uh, and we'll do it in a very simple Roy framework. Uh, the idea is that you can write more fancy uh, and more richer models. Uh, and, uh, I even don't have Caro. Even I told you I will do risk uh, aversion, but I, I even don't have Caro. You can do it in many, many ways. Here is a very stylized way, but to, that to deliver different uh, hypotheses, we can bring day to data to understand what's going on. So here is the idea. So. Uh, I will allow score, the relationship of the score matching to two types of ability, entrepreneurial ability, AE, and the weighted ability, AW. And there's a score here. Uh, you can think A is negative if you are a Lazier model. So I would also think it as a positive if you are uh, the, the talent allocation theorist. Uh, and then there's some typical individual individualistic you know product activity shock and there's some correlation between these shocks and then the ability of entrepreneur would map to, to success of becoming entrepreneur right the return whereas the wage outcome would become a uh, map to wage uh, uh, wage so then how about the, the critical form is the entrepreneur ability and the capital you can also have labor here, but the data doesn't provide much employment information, so we don't have it here. And then, you know, they, they employ capital uh, with the interest of R, and then they have the op optimal size of capital, and then the expected return would be a function of S, uh, right? So the idea is A here would capture the relationship between the score and the different returns of the the, uh, the becoming a form owner. Uh, and similarly, the wage ability is useful to become a wage worker, affected the wage. To do the reduced form way of risk attitude, I just add uh, extra element in the utility function. This is the, this E part. The idea is oh, the same same utility, the same monetary value uh, would be more valuable if I'm more risk averse uh, I would prefer to become a wage worker, right? This is a reflected by the utility. Doing this that rather than the car away because this will become very, very simple. Uh, so it would say, oh, there's some extra part of, of, of being a wage worker. If you think, you know, the critical thing is to understand the slope. This, this part could be applied to everybody in China, but whether this slope uh, really changed with the score or not, we don't know, but in theory, it couldn't be the case, right? And then, uh, you know, your cho individual choice would be simply comparing this expected utility and will get the probability of becoming a firm owner. And then the relationship between the score and this probability, the negative relationship is reflected by this, this simple three parts, right? The A part, you can think a is negative, uh, I put it here. You can think if A is positive, B is positive, but the slope are different. This is the opportunity cost story. If you think, oh, it's only A is enough, right? A negative is enough. That's the negative entrepreneurial ability story. And if you think I don't buy A and B, I, I mainly think about some personal traits uh, that would be 
the, the delta part, right? Uh, and in theory, all of this could work together. Our purpose is just let's look at the different implications and what, what's more consistent with the data. Uh, so here, one critical thing to test the sign of A, it would be to look at form success, right? You know, if this if score transformed to better form success, perhaps it's more reasonable to assume it's a it measures some entrepreneurial ability. But here, there's a typical selection challenges, right? Someone of you mentioned the industry, but in general, we can only observe form success if there is a form, right? So, so the selection, for, you know, if we only look at form success based on form, there might be some selection uh, bias. So, but so uh, theoretically, it's clear. So empirically, uh, we will do some typical uh, Heckman correction to see how this look like. And I want to emphasize that in this setting, usually you, it's very difficult to find a valid instrument to predict entry. Uh, but here, because the richer the mean data, I think it's hopeful and I'll show you how it look like. And we'll look at the sign of B by looking at the wage success. We don't have uh, the mean data on wages, but we, Tom Lee had, and his Tsinghua team had been doing a uh, college graduate survey for a while. So we we'll have a survey data on a totally different population. Think of this as an off sample uh, population. But uh, still, you know, if we still find the same story, I think it's a kind of quite interesting to know. And finally, I'll show you a little bit how this personal traits look like in the survey data. Uh, Okay, so now let's look at form success first, since some of you already mentioned some of these aspects. Uh, so we are use five measures of form success. Uh, these are registered capital size, uh, and whether this form can enter non-local market, which means this is not uh, I created a form, but the form is not in my home province. Uh, this is uh, this is already some success because in the China. Uh, society, there's a lot of local protection. It's not very easy to fund a form outside your home province. Uh, then the expansion is related to the discussion with the Ken. This is say I invested, I have I own a form, and my form become an owner of showing form. Uh, that would be called expansion. Uh, and the, the fourth one is a very, very rare event, but still some of our forms made it to becoming publicly listed. So this is really the right payoff of success, right? Finally, there's this deregistration, which is a proxy, rough proxy for exit. As I mentioned earlier, it's also a noisy proxy because many forms, we, we didn't get deregistered, even though they, their business might stop. But the idea here is we have five measures, they measure success in different degree. And if they deliver similar patterns, we will be more confident about our conclusion. Uh, however, the challenge is if we only estimate form success based on existing forms, there's you know endogenous entry concern. So what do I do? Is I'll first to show you how this looks like if we just look at the correlation based on the form. Then I want to use a, I want to predict entry uh, a little bit to, uh, to see how this you have to correct him possible bias how it looks like. Uh, so I'll talk about the instrument on the next slide, but here is just to say, you know, we just plot this uh, because exit is, is a, we'll do a form survival analysis. Here is just these four measures. And I want to just, you, you can see like, even though of course register capital should be noisy because this reflects a lot about your access to credit, right? Becoming public city is also a bit noisy because it's a really rare event. <laughs> But nevertheless, it's actually a very positive relationship. So if anything, your score, this is also with then college comparison, is positively associated uh, with all the form success measure we have. Uh, and uh, what we'll do in terms of predicting entry, uh, here, I, I found itself is interesting. What I'll do is I'll use some peer exposure, but this peer exposure is not a typical college peer exposure, it's actually uh, within college peer exposure. Uh, the idea is, you know, Shaw and I both were a study at Remy University, a people's university. Uh, we already sorted into people's university. Uh, yet in his cohort, 
pace period mostly come from provinces with more entrepreneurial foundation. So now comes a little bit history. Even though we don't use really Asian history data, what we use to measure different provincial level entrepreneur principality is to use the forms created before 1999, before our study period, uh, divided by the population in that province. Not surprisingly, coastal provinces are more entrepreneurial. So each short cohort has more people from those provinces, whereas my cohort has more people from inland provinces. Then this idea would say showing is more exposed uh, to entrepreneurial activity and it is more likely to preach form. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's you know it's kind of already control for college sorting. So here just to show you the idea, the column one uh, is to look at this if we calculate the peer, peer exposure based on you know the arranging of our peers, their historical uh, propensity of creating forms. It's certainly if you don't control for college sorting, it's certainly significantly correlated with personal characteristics. I only show you exam score here. If you look at other personal traits, it's all significantly correlated, indicates there's a lot of college sorting. But once you control for college sorting, this relationship becomes minimal. So, so basically, my peer characteristics is kind of orthogonal to my own characteristics. Uh, yet, you know, not surprisingly, peer exposure matters a lot. It's actually that this is the marginal effect is about a third of the mean. So if I have more exposure, one standard deviation more exposure increase my entry a lot. Uh, and if we do this way by the, this is not you know, doing the HECMA predict, uh, entry prediction and, the, and to look at this, you know, if we are, if I try to see what we have after correcting this possible selection, what we find the panel A, the HEC to HECMA estimate, panel B is the conditional entry estimate. It's only very slightly smaller than the uh, estimate uh, conditional entry. So our interpretation is, you know, this type of complicated selection appears quantitatively not too important. Another thing, interesting thing I found is in terms of the magnitude of success compared with the mean. So if you look at registered capital, the magnitude is very small. It's less than 1% uh, if you have a high, one standard deviation high score. If you look at being able to register out your home province, it's about 9%. If you look at whether they can expand, it's about 11% of their mean. If you look at whether they can become public listed, it's become 19% of the mean. So it seems that if we get narrower, there is more and more restrictive success measure, if the exam score is more predictive. So I think we would interpret this, if, if anything, the high score people is have higher entrepreneurial ability, despite the fact actually they are less likely to create forms. So this example and exposed contrast is what was the main message of this paper. Uh, and we did a lot of a validity check of this uh, uh, kind of approach. Of, but I want to uh, I want to skip this. I'm happy to talk more. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about how we interpret these patterns. Uh, also, we do survival analysis. Some of you mentioned uh, these are, as you see, this is because I, I found the survival rate is pretty high, and and with the concern that this is a noisy area, right? After ten years, there's sixty percent, about half of the forms survive. This is maybe too high because a lot of the forms didn't deregister, and I don't wouldn't be able to know. But nevertheless, with this proxy, you also find the high score individuals form are less likely to exit or deregister than their lower score peers uh, in terms of survival. Um, so then I want to talk a little bit about. Okay, now I tell you that these forms, these uh, high score individuals. The, if anything, their forms could be more successful, but still they are less likely to create homes. So what did they do? Uh, uh, now they come, so we don't have admin data if they don't create forms, so we don't know what happens to these people. I will rely on some survey data first, and then I'll come back to the admin data to look at regional and industry variation to see whether we would have the similar message 
So here we we we'll look at some college survey data done by uh, Hong Bing when he was at Tsinghua. They surveyed about 90 colleges in China. So we also do within college comparison. So this is a much, much smaller sample. And these individuals are also younger than our studied sample. Uh, moreover, we only look at first job wages and, and the first job outcome. The first job outcome typically more compressed, right? It, you know, usually over time, people's career or, or income more diverge. Nevertheless, given all this strict restriction, we still find within college, high school individuals get first higher first job wages. And because these first job wages are generally compressed, whether they can get you know, other benefits in China become very important. And in this context is whether you can get a local who call. It's like a green card uh, comparison, whether you have a green card to access public goods in Beijing or Shanghai is very critical. And these people are also high school people are also more likely to get such benefits. Uh, and in the survey data, we know a little bit their you know, employment, whether it's in the state sector or the private form. So the column five, six, seven, eight is to do the relative risk measure. If it's larger than one, you said so the default is whether they start a form or become an entrepreneur. Uh, and the, the both the state sector and the private form have an estimate larger than one. Uh, indicates you know both matters as alternative opportunities. But if anything, the state sector appears to be large, has slightly larger and more precise estimate. So we interpret this as some suggestive evidence, you know, among the alternatives, the state sector plays a larger role. But this is a limited survey data, right? So if this is the, the message we want to say whether it's true or not, we want to see whether this message could you know, deliver or could be consistent with some regional or an industry variation. So here is what we do. Now we come back to the what mean data in terms of form creation. And in the statistical yearbook, there's some you know, data on the uh, state wage premium, like relative to the private sector for the state wage uh, fair. So if it's higher, it means a more higher state wage premium. And the, the simple exercise just to show that, you know, if we have a negative relationship, I showed you, and with the higher state sector premium, this negative relationship becomes even stronger. So this is just to say, you know, consistent with the survey data, you know, the regional variation is also relatively consistent. It's also consistent with the story of the presence of the state sector. And how about the industry uh, variation? So here, you you, you want, we want to be careful because. We don't want to look at form or existing forms and by the industry, right? Because there are a lot of forms, a lot of people who don't create forms. So how does this figure make? So here, the definition would be if you create a form in a certain industry, it will be one. So for instance, if you you created a hotel form, uh, you you will be uh, accounted as entrepreneur in one, but. But in this definition, if you created a science technology form, you in this category, it will be zero. So let's recall this is unconditional definition. Uh, and uh, it's recall that. So this is look at the, this is already relative to the mean. So this is, you know, recall our baseline estimate is once the deviation increases, the score is associated with the 10% lower chance of creating a form, right? And if you look at this estimate, it ranges from close to zero to 40% even, 35%. And you see there's a huge variation, right? Uh, and our we want to understand what drives the variation. Uh, there are two major factors. The first would be human capital. Maybe in some sector, science tech especially, you need more high score people, maybe. That's why you have a lower uh, you know, negative relationship, uh, but it's not, it's, you know, certainly it's a very important factor. The second that we are interested in is whether the survey evidence is relevant here, you know, look at the presence of state sector in this different industry. So here is the correlation I want to show you across industries. So this pattern is already resisting control for average schooling of employees in each industry. So we already control for 
the demand of human capital. And the x axis is the state investment share in each industry, and the y axis is the coefficient. All of this controlled for you know human capital factor. And you see there's a, this negative, very clear negative relationship. Basically, said you know in the sector like construction or culture where there's more a stronger state presence actually the negative relationship is stronger than the wholesale and the retail or hotel and the restaurant so so again you know it's just says, suggesting this context that actually the presence of the states play the rule even though it cannot explain everything but it certainly plays the rule in explaining this negative relationship we find across different industries uh and then so i hope this you know patterns already tell you this give you a painted the picture how to interpret this finding but let's still think a little bit about these two groups alternative story uh as i said the negative entrepreneurial story would could be driven by different reasons right it could be indeed that the score is a bad ability measure it's less balanced it's single dimensional uh and it's reflect family input uh but if anything so initially initially i thought if we find this finding oh this will be a very appealing study because there's so many people create like criticize the chinese education system <laughs> look we find that oh you know these are really bad measure and availability but we don't you know what whatever we try is actually the opposite finding so uh, at least uh, I find this uh, useful. My some of my Chinese students in the US, I have some stigma that oh, you know, I'm good at uh, uh, first year courses when I took the exam, but uh, maybe I'm very bad as a researcher. <laughs> then I, at least now I have some evidence to show that this is maybe uh, you know part of this is actually a stigma. Uh, the second group is more like this personal traits story to say, oh, look, maybe high score individuals are more risk averse, less social, etc. Uh, I want to first emphasize this interpretation is difficult to explain the regional industry variation, right? You would think, yeah, even this is true, that it shouldn't vary, may wise in certain provinces uh, so strong <laughs> and others not. Similarly, industry wise, you know, you have to make strong assumption about the variation of this relationship across the region and industry to explain the pattern. But nevertheless, we're also curious to know, you know, the profile of these high score individuals, how they look like, are they very different? So I'll show you some suggestive evidence because these are rely on surveys and these are based on people's answers of this. This, uh, you know, you can all oh, they always you can always have some skepticism of, of people's answer of this question. But now I think I still find it kind of useful to know. So we will look at uh, three groups of uh, uh, variables. The first is academic performance. The second, or four groups. The second is the typical political uh, membership. Uh, and the fourth, the third group is some social activity, their participation in social activity in college, and finally some risk aversion measure. Uh, what we find, not surprisingly at all, if a man has higher score interest college college interest exam score upon graduation, they also have higher GPA and more likely to get some academic award. This is not surprising. This is a okay, academic score measure. So they should have predicted, you know, predictive of all this academic success. We also find that they're also more likely to join the Communist Party after graduation uh, or, or in college upon graduation. I think this is also consistent with the fact they are also have some advantage of joining the state sector. You know, being a party member gives you some advantage. Uh, so this is both supply and the demand story, right? The party also want to screen and attract more high uh, you know, score, better performed students to the organization. Uh, and the social activity will measure in various ways, whether you know their student union, whether they are leaders there, whether they are leaders of any you know, social organization, class organization. We didn't find that these people are more social or less social, actually. It's, uh, with no strong relationship and risk aversion 
uh, honestly, when when Hongbin did the survey, many uh, you know he did it for five years. The survey designed when I joined the survey is more to design to map to understand the elite college premium in China. So we are not none of us are bacteria economists. Uh, so we never thought that only one year, while I think some behavior economists uh, approached uh, the Qinghua team and add uh, some some person some risk aversion uh, questions. So these are typical lottery questions, right? Would you prefer to get a lottery or get a fixed uh, uh, money? Or you or another question is, oh, if you are an investor, would you? Prefer to ensure certain return or take risk to uh, pursuing uh, a more more ret higher return. Uh, so we don't find also we don't find a very strong relationship. It's true that even in this noisy manner, women are more risk averse. That's the strong pattern. But uh, we don't find any strong relationship between the score and uh, and uh, uh, this kind of answer to this question. Uh, no, again, no, we don't want to draw too strong conclusion. You know, even if this, I would say, even if they have a different uh, risk attitude, and because risk attitude is also indulgent, I feel like, you know, if you are a very high score individual and you have a, a lot of good options to work in the state sector, naturally your risk, you know, preference also change because what you will get or what you will lose, give up is much, you know, more valuable, right? So I found it's tricky to how to think about this kind of answers. But even if you think this is the case, I, I would find it difficult to explain the regional and the industry variation. But I don't want to draw super strong conclusion. I'm not a behavior economics. When I look at the survey data, I'm always a little bit scared because how could we really measure people's type so so starkly? Anyway. But but I found it interesting. You, maybe I'm brainwashed by myself. I found it not surprising. This high score individual students, you know, they perform better in 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 academic area. They also attracted by the party because this is how the party works in recruitment. As to whether they are social or whether they are, you know, risk, uh, it's not so clear. It's not that they are much less social or, or that, you know. Uh, anyway, that's my interpretation. Uh, so let me conclude and summarize, and we may even have a little bit of uh, time for more discussion. I'm very happy to do that. So just to, to summarize, this paper, we document this pattern, we call it entrepreneurial reluctance of talented individuals, which refer to the fact that, you know, given the same back college background, uh, high score individuals are less likely to print form. However, this is, you know, we shouldn't, <laughs> Have this stigma that the, this is reflect that high score individuals are brand entrepreneurs or or they are less creative. Yeah, if anything, at least in this setting, we find the score are positively associated with the bomb success. However, we measure it. Uh, a limitation of this study is uh, I don't know, I don't know, can't, can't give you quantitative uh, evaluation on talent allocation. You know, in some sense. It's good that the public sector in China attracted high ability people. You know, these are policy makers, they, they, they work hard, they are clever, that's great. But the question is more like whether we need so many talented individuals in the public sector. Uh, I, I, I still think there's maybe too many, that the public sector is too appealing. And many of these jobs are state-owned enterprises. And we know that you know the state-owned enterprises are not the productive type of firms in China. Uh, and I want to also want to mention whether you know should we explain this if we expect this finding to hold in Australia? I don't know. <laughs> in fact, uh, uh, the main message of this study is to say that uh, uh, you know it's very important to consider the return structure of different societies. In this case, you know, the, the rule of the state plays a very important role in explaining the regional, the, the talent allocation across the country. Uh, and so, for instance, you, 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 you might find this connective relationship to be the case in the UK, but when you go to see, oh, which is the alternative sector attract these talented people, it could be the finance sector rather than public sector. So, so the idea is not to draw a general lesson, the general relationship across society, 
but to I to to emphasize the idea, it's used, you know, it's important to consider the 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 reward structure across society. Uh, and uh, I want to last say a little bit about the the literature contribution to the literature. As I said, surprisingly or not, there are very few studies uh, that directly look at individual level ability and entrepreneurship. There's some use the US survey data. Often they, they mix the uh, self-employment and uh, and uh, from owner. So once you look at self-employment, that accounts for the majority of entrepreneurship in entrepreneurial studies. You will typically find a negative relationship because these are not you know desirable uh, jobs. Uh, but once you know the recent it's not recent now like uh, the live and Robbie stand paper shows very clearly in the U.S. context. Once you zoom into the incorporated businesses. In fact, there's a positive relationship between ability and the uh, form creation, which is opposite to our finding. Uh, and as I said, this you know the in the Chinese context, the macro studies argue that you know the state sector may actually hinder the economic development. Here is more like micro level uh, evidence in terms of uh, occupation choices. Uh, again, you know, just to clarify, at the individual level, this makes perfect sense. We are not going to blame any anyone who joined the uh, public sector. You should, you know, if I were given the choice, I might also do that. Uh, it's more like our choices would have some different implication or spill or not, you know, which we didn't consider uh, when we decided uh, uh, about our jobs. And finally, you know, there's a lot, there's this very influential theoretical literature on talent allocation. Uh, so far, the empirical evidence is limited, and here is example and really highlight the rule of the state, which I, I you know, I hope to uh, think a bit more uh, as a political economist. Uh, so I shut up here and I look forward to to some uh, comments and questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Risha. Very interesting uh, research and findings. So here, I think officially we just have one more minute. So oh, okay. would you please, uh, would you like to still a very time, a very good time management? So would you just still be able to stay with us for more questions yeah, yeah, uh, after yeah, one fifteen? Sure. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so any questions? Yeah, Tusha. Tusha. Thank you. Great presentation. So I was thinking, um, so I have two comments. First is about the risk preference measure, which I find a bit strange, to be honest. Uh, the previous studies would, doc uh, they have documented a strong relationship between educational attainment, um, achievement, and risk preference. So that should, should be a bit weird. But you qualify that it's a small sample and whatnot. Uh, my main comment is about, you know, if I were to look at test scores, they are, they are an outcome of, a lot of different things. So there's a production function of test scores. And some of the things that go into it are endowment, the cognitive endowment that you're born with, um, the input that your parents make into improving that cognitive endowment. And also in some models, what you expect your desired uh, career path or occupation will be in the future. So I'm thinking of a world where suppose I'm born in a family with all my you know, parents and grandparents entrepreneurs. I have really, limited intent, in, incentive to invest in cognition if I know that cognition, like a test course, sorry, test course, if I know the test scores would not matter a lot for success of my firm, right? And I'll come back to the point about, you know, success of the firm being correlated to test scores. Now, so if that's the case, then there'll be a bit of sorting. People who are born in family firms will not invest a lot to improve their test scores. But then you document that there's still a positive correlation. And the positive correlation uh, that you use the Heckman model for, that could be precisely because, you know, even if you were born in a family that did not invest a lot in your improving your cognition, but you had a massive endowment, you were born with like amazing level of cognition, then despite not being able, not having invested in it, in it you do well on the test scores. And that initial cognition could predict your firm's success as well, right? So it's the initial cognition that's predicting your success. So all, so the model that I'm thinking about is people strategically invest in improving their test scores or not, right? And uh, and if if that's the model, I'm just wondering which which one of the three uh, hypotheses will fit in. 
right? because now the opportunity cost becomes endogenous, the you know negative sorting becomes endogenous, and preferences to some extent as well, right? So where would you put that kind of a model where people strategically invest? Uh, yeah, I, I need to uh, first. I certainly this is a, a very deep question. I still haven't fully understand the different layers. Uh, I, I just reflect on my cognitive ability not high enough, no, but no. Uh, but I. I but yes, I, I think it's a good point. Um, that, that, that's just a joke. I would, uh, it's certainly a good point. I, I, I want to think a bit more, even though it would be very difficult, right, as you can imagine. Uh, and, and also ask myself, you know, what's this uh, test score really measure? It's perhaps, I, you know, it's, it's a mix of things like what you said, right? This, like, you know, I imagine some, uh, for someone who always gets a good score, uh, I would think we, you know, we are relatively this type of people are disciplined. Uh, we are not necessarily have a this. You know, it's like this kind of discipline and uh, you know, concentrate being able to concentrate, etc. These things are useful across occupations, right? So, um, uh, so I can't deny anything of you. You you said I I just don't know how to how to really. Tango it. I think one thing as a cheap answer is we shouldn't call it a, we should just call it a test score. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't call it anything as ability or or, or something. It, but it just is such it's just such a measure the Chinese society is obsessed with, and what is really correlated with the different type of success. So that's that's what we can, we want to do as to uh, this self itself. I. This is this setting certainly we can't do much in terms of uh, uh, what you said the strategic investment in this score, right? Um, but but I let me think a bit more and also please send us uh, send me any reference. I'm learning, I'm a beginner of this education literature. I want to learn more and maybe in some other setting where I can better understand uh, this type of uh, question. For instance, one thing in the data I, I didn't talk too much about it actually there are about 20 percent of people are repeat exam takers uh because it's so critical so the, the data i showed you is uh to look at the first time of their score and also you know draw, to see what happens if we drop those repeat taker but they also repeat taker who certainly want to strategically improve their score etc so maybe there's something to be think about uh in different ways. Here, I, I because if I make every part like what you said, I just don't have the ability to to really handle this thing. But I, I think it's certainly worthwhile thinking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. To some extent, the your findings pretty much expected, right? According to uh, just casual observations, uh, a in China basically a. Uh, uh, Public sector employment is so popular, and uh, they, there are so many jobs there, and uh, the uh, students with high uh, with uh, with university degree still relatively very small, right? That's my uh, just a couple of comments. Also, I, I have the same observation for uh, about the Chinese overseas. Basically, uh, Ch Chinese living in other countries, uh, those who are successful in business. They don't have necessarily have high education, and those who end up with master PhDs, they probably all end up in the informal sector, accelerate employees in universities in companies. So it's a similar pattern, right? Mm -hmm. There's a similarity and difference. So first, I'm happy you find it not surprising. Uh, that you know, it would be more troublesome if someone who knows the society and the find is super, super surprised. <laughs> they could be wrong, <laughs> but so in some sense, not. Just, I, I'm also brainwashed by, by myself. Like I found, oh, it actually should be the case, and this is the. But there's also what you mentioned in the end is also a little bit uh, not what we find. It's not that it's a, the one subtle thing is is more about the success. Whether these people. Could be more successful. The high score individuals, they they didn't uh, 
uh, join the they become entrepreneurs maybe not surprising uh, if, if you know china but whether these people could be you know if they, they create forms whether their form could be larger that's the more subtle thing and what we find is actually these people could be a good entrepreneur even though they didn't uh, whereas the main uh, some people may have this strong prior whether depending on your prior or understanding of the society people did have a prior that this score is a bad ability myra and they shouldn't you know these people if they become entrepreneur they would be a worse entrepreneur uh, you know even as i said even my students have this similar parallel stigma in their research ability which i i found uh, interesting it's all what i want to understand is this true or is this stigma uh, another way just to coming back to tusha's question this deep difficult question is what i show you in the end is average relationship right it's on average these things are look like this the slope is positive or negative but there's certainly a lot of heterogeneity uh it's just difficult to it's possible in some outliers uh, there's uh, you know some groups of people are strategically investing in their children etc uh, or, or it's a yeah so this is that's the limitation is there's maybe a lot of heterogeneity i can't really be able to tell uh, but it's just on average this is the case yeah Yes, so uh, Richard, can I just ask, ask a few questions? Uh, first, uh, I think uh, it's nice you show a graph, a horizontal axis, just like the intensity of the state sector, and a vertical axis is just to show this um, um, firm creation. So you find the negative uh, relationship. So uh, I'm also wondering, so how you measure that uh, uh, state uh, intensity? Have you tried to use this um, lagged value? I think that could be more. Uh, uh, more uh, more reasonable to use the lack value rather than the current. I, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a year by year data. It's, uh, I think it's we use 2000. We can use one. Year. I think the picture, specific picture I showed you is 2010. Uh, share. So it's measured at the share of fixed investment. This is statistical yearbook measure. Mm -hmm. Fixed investment uh, by the states. Uh, divided by the total uh, invest fixed investment in that industry. Uh, we used 2010, I think, in this uh, pick specific yeah. figure. Whether we used 2005 or it, it's actually very similar because you know this kind of structure uh, by industry is relatively stable over time. Yeah, so I agree. So, but I think uh, uh, to the referee that that might be better if you can use yeah. this even. Okay, so the, the even earlier. Uh, intensity yeah. to to show this is quite in, uh, exogenous. Uh, yes. That's one one comment. The second one, just I think, uh, when you talk about the out of home creation of the firm, so you yeah. only use this kind of the out of the hometown where where this uh, individual grow up. Uh, I'm thinking whether you can move even further to see whether that student actually create a firm not only out of the hometown but also out of the college they entered. Oh, uh, yes, we because can they, can, they can also have yeah. the, some network there. So with their alumni, with their local network in their college, I think that would be even further push your story. Yes, that's possible. That's possible. I think that's also very uh, the, something I want to study. It's just so many things to be studied. It's more like, uh, you know, in some sense, education in China is a migration channel, uh, you know, you maybe in many countries it's like that but china is big and there's this big <laughs> and there's this local protection sector so i thought about oh because here this you know we know where they their high school we know their college right uh, we know their uh, future form etc i thought oh maybe this yeah we said we can certainly do that yeah yeah, I think that could be uh, some people say, okay, Shenzhen uh, is successful. I think that it is successful on the one, like one fact is just there's no strong local network there. And traditionally, yeah, they well, even do not have big uh, university there. Yes. I think that is an interesting um, uh, thing you can maybe, maybe you can just uh, uh, investigate. Uh, another interesting question in my mind is whether just some, it's just about very general and the theoretical uh, uh, thinking. That is, uh, okay, now your argument is now 
uh, state sector provide some premium, wage premium or other premiums to attract these tenants. Uh, but at the same time, do these people actually can actually just help to improve the productivity of the state uh, state owned enterprises and compete with the uh, private enterprises? Okay, many people argue that uh, on average, the uh, state enterprises are less productive, uh, craft, this, this kind of thing. But my observation is actually there's a huge variance among this uh, SLE. Some SLE are really productive and the leaders there and the CEOs, they are very, very talented, very capable. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, these guys, you know, once they're selected into the SLE, they, will co they also can make SLE even stronger. And uh, in that case, that's the reason why I'm uh, telling, I'm asking you whether how you measure this uh, intensity of SLE, because the talents in SLE uh, selected in uh, these talents selected into SLE, they can also make SLE even stronger. It is endogenous. Uh, in principle, yes. Uh, we, we don't know for sure. And the, I had a quick look. So some as <laughs> I present in this paper in different places. Someone approached us with different data. So in particular for one city, which I was asked not to name which one, there's admin data on the wage history of different people. So just out of curiosity, I asked the people, because oh, just for all this data, I couldn't really use it myself. So it involves a lot of, you know, the institution build a server. So this is something I learned from you know, students working on the server tell me that uh, I want to ask you just to have a quick look at the predictivity of the score in terms of their wage history. This is just based on one city. So we have done very serious uh, analysis about selection, etc. But nevertheless, look look like for if the joint state-owned enterprise over time, the predictivity of this score in predicting their wage becomes smaller, whereas uh, the private sector looks larger. So this is something very, very tentative. Uh, but, but I think though, you know, so there's some other data one can, if one is interested in this type of question. As yeah, yeah, yeah. Project. I think that, that is very interesting to, to look at their career path within the SOE uh, yeah. state sector as well. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. yeah thank you. So Simon, uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry, I, I kind of missed a big chunk of it, um, but um, I, I think my comment is not really related to your entrepreneurial study, but I, I know this data you have, I think it sounds amazing, uh, and I'm not sure if you are uh, interested in studying the marriage market. Oh. Um, so, so, so I think, you know, you know it, it, the Chinese saying it always goes like, you know, there are beautiful ladies in the books. Okay. Right? So, so that means that you study hard, then you can marry a beautiful woman. Okay. Right. So I'm not sure if you can link your the college entrance score data to their marriage outcomes. Um, uh, is that possible? Uh, in the depends on what kind of thing you want. In general, not easy to know the marriage relationship. I think of people. Uh, so far, I don't. So just so for those who don't know the saying, you said that the they're not only beautiful. There's real things in the books. The beautiful ladies. There's also offices in the book. So the, I the state sector is more like the offices in the book. Uh, and the Simon wants me to speak to the beautiful ladies in the book. Uh, happy yes, but uh, I, I guess you needed to. Uh, to use some survey data, but usually the mean data wouldn't tell you the marriage, uh, you, you know, usually you wouldn't report because unless you buy a family, buy a house. So there's so many things. Yeah, someone also approaches with some house, but not that we want to do it. It just with some house to test, to test data there where you, then it's always like very selected, right? When you want to go to that route, there you wouldn't know a little bit. But for the most of the mean data I know of, you really you wouldn't report your, your partner's information. No, oh, I see. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> Sean? 
Sorry. Yeah, thanks a lot, yeah. Fosti. And uh, uh, yeah, as I said, I wish it's a very nice chatting with you in these days, but maybe in the future, uh, I, I hope to see some of you, to be able to see, meet some of you in person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is very interesting research, and I share your attitude to keep it very uh, conservative to make any statement. So, yeah, so statement without over overstate some foundings. Uh, or impose any prior assumptions uh, or hypothesis to test, just come up with the facts and uh, laying out the possible explanations and uh, yeah, and uh, looking to the every parts, every components, yeah, carefully. I think that is a, a research attitude we, 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 we want to have rather than just uh, have a very strong prior and the test with some, yeah, uh, some data, yeah, so I think that is, uh, there's something I like, yeah. It's also the nature of this project. It, I guess some project you do have some prior, you want to prove you are right. This is, this, this is the nature of this project. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, hopefully it will lead to more following uh, literature, uh, following studies, yeah, in the future. I think it will. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So much, so. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you. So, yeah. Time. Thank you, Rich. And thanks for all my colleagues uh, staying here. Yeah. So have a good weekend. Bye. Okay. Bye. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.